welcome to my channel thank you for joining me today again uh my name is pastor dial if you have if this is your first time i appreciate you coming to hear a word of encouragement from me i do this from time to time just to encourage you uh to make sure that uh your week is uh, loaded with encouragement and you have something that you can go into your week with may god speak his word to you today in the name of jesus today i want to encourage you from the book of psalm 23 and um, reading from the new living translation the first verse caught my attention of course and uh it just gets me so excited to look at this the first verse is the lord is my best friend and my shepherd i always have more than enough you know the first thing that i see here is the creator of the universe says that he is your best friend he is my best friend what do best friends do you know you have an issue you want to talk to somebody about it you call your best friend you are overjoyed maybe you one handsome guy just you know approaches you and you you, you know emotions are all over the place you call your best friend i remember when my you know when i was in university and i met, met my husband um it was, you know at that time and every time i wanted to talk i would call my best friend and say you know what this guy said today you know what he did today you know where he took me today you know and sometimes when i when you are sad you want to talk to your best friend and your best friend is always there to listen to you to hear you you do things with them you go to the nail salon with them you go to the hairdressing salon with them you do things with your best friend you hang out on the phone hours at night and be talking you watch movies that you like together you do things together with your best friend now imagine the creator of the universe sitting down with you or you know talking to you and you know you're talking you're just telling them everything that's going on in your life the creator of the universe he has time to be your personal best friend that's who god is he is our best friend hallelujah now the other thing that he is in this verse is is also our shepherd our best friends cannot solve our problems many times they will tell them we just about it and then we move on that's what best friends are for but this person this lord says he is our shepherd a shepherd leads a shepherd directs a shepherd provides so this person not only hears our issues not only listens to our issues he takes care of them that is the reason he, he says i always have more than enough a best friend will not give you all that you need but a shepherd your shepherd will give you all that you need. I grew up in the northern uh, part of Nigeria, you know, spent some time there when I was growing up. And uh, what this reminds me is uh, the Fulani people uh, uh, th that were shepherds at that time. You know, they would shepherd their animals. I can envision them, they have their rod on their shoulders and they are walking and using that rod to guide and guard that those animals so that they will not go astray. Nobody would, would be able to come near those animals to hurt them. That's what shepherds do. They would direct, they have those animals go in front of them and they direct them. Sometimes they have to go on the side and say, no, there is a ditch on this side. You don't go there. Oh, there is a snake that is coming on this side. That's what the shepherd does. He provides all that we need. And the second thing, he says here, no, no, in, in, the, in that first thing, is, I'm looking at it, the, the Lord of the universe is your best friend, not your husband, not your mama. It is the God of the universe and he takes care of us the right way. He makes sure that we are taking, us, taking care of the right way. And he says, you have, you always, I always have more than enough. I am so worthy to him that he wants to give me all that I need. So if you are thinking that you are not worthy, if you are thinking that, oh, I'm all alone, I don't have a best friend, Jesus is telling you here that he is your best friend. He gives you all that you need. He, if you need sustenance, if you need pleasure, if you, you know, your, your need, what you need is to sustain you. Like you need air you need food you need a roof over your head 
God makes sure that those are ready. He says, I, another translation says, I shall not want for any good thing. So if he can provide your need, he also provides your wants. Your want is for you, it's for pleasure. Okay? Now, I, I, I need clothes. But if I want a Gucci shirt, or I want a, 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 a Fendi, a pair of Fendi shoes, or I just want to carry a, 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 a Ferragamo bag, you know, around. Those are wants. My need is clothing. So I want a better, I have a, an option for my clothing. Hallelujah. And God always supplies not only your need, but your wants. So you can tell God, if God will make sure that you eat, but if you want a, 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 an intercontinental dish, oh, I don't want rice, I want sushi. You see, that is a want. Rice will sustain you, but sushi will bring pleasure to you. Hallelujah. So God provides all those things. Will God make sure you had everything that you needed if you are worthless to him? I don't know if you are thinking that you are worthless. You are not worthy of somebody to take care of you. You are not worthy of someone to hear you. Listen, God is there for you. Our Lord and Savior Jesus is there for you. There is nothing that God cannot give to you. Nothing that he will not provide for your life. Hallelujah. There is always hope in every situation for you. Your hope is in the word of God. Your hope is in Christ Jesus. I want to encourage you today. There is nothing you need that our Lord will not provide for you. The second thing that I see here is that he says he makes you to lie down in green pastures. He makes us to lie down. The Passion Translation says he offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. He offers a resting place for me in his luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, the quiet brook of bliss. Hallelujah. I'm thinking about it. I'm looking at it like he takes me. He offers, he places me in his arms, in his luxurious love. I can imagine me being a baby. When my children were babies and I was, you know, feeding them, I would hold them in my hands and then I would begin to stroke their heads. And I'll begin to tell them, child, you are awesome. You are, you're going to be a great person. You know, and that is what God, in his, in his loving embrace, he holds on to you. Hallelujah. You see, God holds on to you. He would never let you go. You hold on to God. He has you in his embrace. He is your your shepherd he knows you out of the whole multitude of the world of seven or eight billion people on earth i don't know if we are less now but out of all the people on the earth he has you in his embrace he actually has your name written in his hand he says so he says i have you engraved in the palm of my hand not only your name but you your image in the palm of his hand so every time he opens his hands he sees you and he loves on you the lord is your best friend he is also your shepherd hallelujah so uh, another thing that i see here is that it, it, verse 3 it says that's where he restores and revives my life he opens before me pathways to god's pleasure and leads me along in his footstep of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Hallelujah. You see, I'm talking about restoration and revival here. The Lord will restore you. He will revive you. You know, sometimes we are so, we are not at peace. We are so on edge. We are, we, we are, uh, we, we are unstable. We, 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 we are tired, but we don't know it. We need restoration. Imagine a child that needs to take a nap, a little toddler that needs to take a nap. You know toddlers, they never want to, it's, it's, it will look as if the whole world is going to pass them by if they ever took that nap. But they will be crappy, they will be crabby, they will cry over issues that are not, you know, toy falls on the floor, a toy that the child can pick up, he will start crying. Sometimes we get to that level too, even as children of God. But this is the time that Jesus Christ takes us and he restores us. He will make us to lie down in green 
passion. He will, uh, sometimes he, 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 the way he does it is he will lie down. When your child wants to sleep, like my own children, if they if they wanted to sleep when they were younger uh, and they were uh, uh, they wanted to take a nap, they would not want to go lay down. But what I would do was I would go lay down beside them, make sure that they fall asleep. Then I can get up and do what I need to do. It's the same way God lies beside us. The Bible says he makes me to lie down beside green pastures. Making you to lie down is, is there with you. He doesn't just push you. God lay down. No, he takes you there and he lays down with you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He does not just make us to lie down in dirt or in mud. He makes us to lie down in green pastures where we can enjoy inner peace by quiet waters where we can enjoy inner peace in spite of adversity that's going on around us not rapid waters that will rock your boat or that will or waterfalls that will make you fall down he takes you beside still waters that you will just hear it you will just see in serenity in place of quietness in place of of peace when you face challenges he enables you to walk in perfect inner peace this is a god he restores our soul he restores our mental health a lot of times when we go out there we are tired our mental ability is gone down but the moment we go to our best friend and our shepherd he restores our mental health, the innermost part of us. He goes deep down into our innermost part and provides restoration. Our innermost part is our seat of emotions, is a place of our thinking, place where that is where our restoration gets to. That is where it's it, 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 it that is there that we get restoration from. For, 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 from the Lord, he restores our soul, restores our thoughts. Our thoughts begin to align back to him when we yield to him. He restores our mind. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes things that are going on around the world makes you want to think like, am I really, am I going crazy? Is this, but when we get back to Jesus, he resets us, he restores us, he teaches us to honor him. He teaches us to get honor to him. That's how he leads us in the path of righteousness. So that the things that we do will bring honor to him. The words that we speak will bring honor to him. The way that we act will bring honor to him. The Lord Jesus Christ teaches us all this from this scripture. And it says in the first, first verse that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for his rod and his staff they comfort me. Let me tell you something. The valley of the shadow of death is only a shadow. A shadow is not the original. So you are not dying. It may look as if you are walking in death, but it is only a shadow. A shadow has no life. The devil will make the shadow of death to look as if you are actually dying. But the Bible, the word of the Lord says that when you walk through that lie that the devil is telling you, you will have no fear. There is no fear because God has you in his luxurious love. There is no fear in love. The Lord loves you. He takes you. He walks with you. Even when you, that shadow looks real to you, looks as if death is knocking on your door. Hang on to Jesus. Hold on to him. He will make sure that you are not afraid. Hallelujah. You are not worthless to God. He is with you. His word, his word, his promises, that one helps you. He comforts you. His rod, his staff is his anointing, his authority. When you have a staff, a staff carries authority. When you, when you, when you, when you know about uh, kingship or royalty in Nigeria, when the king is not able to get to somewhere, he, he will send his staff of office. That staff just tells you that I am there as the king. I am there. I, my, my, my staff represents me. So his staff is what he uses to help you. Even when you cannot see him, you see the anointing. You have the authority. He has given you his staff of office. He has given you authority 
to do what you, you need to do on earth. He, he uses that to guide and to guard you. The Holy Spirit is inside of you. That is his staff inside of you. He gives you authority. The Bible says in the last verse, verse that he prepares a table before you that's verse five prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemy that table how can you imagine the king of the universe preparing a table before you the creator of heaven and earth he prepares a table before you and that table is buffet all you can eat you eat as much as you want what do you want i'm not talking about physical food now i'm talking about all manner of food they tells us in the new testament it says all things are ready for you so whatever it is you need do you need health do you need prosperity do you need longevity do you need restoration anything you need it's been prepared for you by the lord jesus christ all you can eat and your enemy cannot do anything about it. He says in the presence of your enemy, he prepares it. He is standing there as your... Can, have you ever been to a restaurant and the waitress is standing? They have prepared... The chef has prepared the food. It's set for you. And the waitress is standing beside you, making sure if any fly comes near that food, it will... You know, that waitress, oh, no, 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 no. If there is anything around you that needs to be moved so that you can be comfortable, the waitress makes sure that you are comfortable. That's what our Lord is doing for us here. The master of the universe has made himself your best friend, has made himself your, 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 your shepherd. He has also made himself your servant, made himself your waiter to wait on you, to give you what you did. All you need to do is to submit to him. Let me tell you something. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are royalty. You are a king and a priest. <laughs> you are worth dying for. Jesus Christ died for you. You are worthy. No matter what you have gone through, you are worthy. Hallelujah. So today, I want to encourage you. Stick to Jesus. Stay with him. He is your best friend. He is your shepherd. He will lead and guide you. Is there something in your heart that you need God to hear? Tell him about it. He is waiting to hear you. He is waiting to lead you. Waiting to, 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 to take you to where you need to get to. And also, he makes sure that he goes with you. Wherever you are, he leads you to, he is there to follow you. His love is everlasting. I want you to Hold on to him today and your joy will be full. May the peace of God go with you this week. May you experience the everlasting love, the luxurious love of God this week in Jesus' name. I love you. God bless you.